A very good day to you and welcome to this week's edition of our weekly news roundup on Africa Today News New York. My name is Favor Ahem and these are the top stories that made talking points for us in the week that just ended. We began the week on Monday where we brought you the reports that a former vice president of Nigeria and presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the last election, Atiku Abubakar came out to declare that the country was actually the biggest loser in the Supreme Court's judgment that affirmed President Bola Tinubu as winner of the 25th February presidential poll. Atiku says at a news conference in Abuja that history would treat him kindly for his role in contesting the election's results. On the same day, we reported that no fewer than 300 shops were destroyed following a fire accident that occurred in the Ladipo Plank Market, Orile Igamon area of Lagos State. Still on Monday, we informed you that Argentina and Inter Miami playmaker Lionel Messi won the Ballon d'Or Award for a record extending eighth time while Spain midfielder Aitana Bonmati claimed the women's Ballon d'Or. Messi led his country to World Cup glory last year as he lifted the trophy for the first time and won the Golden Ball Award for the best player of the tournament, which was held in Qatar. On Tuesday, we reported that the King of England killed Ch King Charles III left many surprised when he acknowledged the abhorrent and unjustifiable acts of violence committed against Kenyans during their independence struggle. The monarch addressed the wrongdoings of Britain's colonial era on his state visit to Kenya. On the same day, we reported that the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, signed a law which effectively revokes Russia's ratification of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. The 1996 treaty outlaws all nuclear explosions, including live tests of nuclear weapons, though it never came into force because some key countries, including the United States and China, never ratified it. Still on Tuesday, we reported that Brownhill Investments Company Limited, who are the organizers of the annual Worry Again concert, instituted a 2.3 billion naira suit against hip hop artist David Adeleke, popularly known as The Vido, over an alleged breach of agreement or contract entered into between them. On Wednesday, we brought you the report that the president of Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, comrade Joe Ajero, was rushed to the Federal Medical Center, FMC, Oweri, where he reportedly received medical attention. This came hours after he was brutally attacked and assaulted by heavily armed security operatives in Fogged. On the same day, we reported that the governor of Bronu State, Professor Babaga Nazulum, came out to raise an alarm, warning that the terrorist group known as Boko Haram may wipe Nigeria off the map if the necessary precautions were not taken. Still on Wednesday, we reported that the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, came out to declare that a ceasefire in the ongoing Gaza war will not happen, as it would simply amount to surrender to Hamas. He noted that the international community must demand that the captives be freed immediately, unconditionally. you that the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, came out to announce the introduction of visa-free travel for all Africans, making Rwanda the fourth African country to do so over the last few years. We also reported on the same day that in response to public criticism regarding the allotment of 5.095 billion naira for the procurement of a presidential yacht 
in the 2023 supplementary budget, the Nigerian House of Representatives announced that it had eliminated the budget reallocation. Speaking to journalists on the matter, Abubakar Bichi, who is the chairman of the House Appropriations Committee, disclosed that the budget allocation for student loans had been raised from 5 billion to 10 billion naira. On Friday, we brought you the reports that the French government came out to declare its intention to return $150 million from the embezzled funds link linked to the late General Sani Abacha to the federal government of Nigeria. Since the demise of Abacha, who ruled Nigeria from 1993 to 1998, the country has received substantial funds stashed abroad, amounting to hundreds of billions of dollars. On the same day, we reported that the president of Germany expressed shame for the colonial atrocities his country inflicted on Tanzania many years ago. German forces had murdered no fewer than 300,000 people during the Maji Maji Rebellion in the 1900s, one of the bloodiest anti-colonial uprisings. Still on Friday, we told you that the president of Kenya, William Ruto, announced that all African visitors will no longer need visas to enter the country from 2024. The move received widespread applause as Kenya followed in the footsteps of Settles, the Gambia and Benin in becoming the fourth African country to abandon visa requirements for African nationals. Finally on Saturday, we brought you the reports that River State's Governor Simina Layu Fubara came out to apologize to the people of the state in the wake of political disturbances Involving former Governor Nyesam Wiki, he labels the upheaval as the regrettable anxieties of the last few days and emphasized that making sacrifices is crucial for peace to endure. We also reported that the United Nations came out to announce that there were 4.4 million individuals worldwide who were officially classified as stateless, yet this figure is likely an underrepresentation due to their invisibility. Lastly, we reported that the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, and former Governor of River State, Nyesam Wike, came out to describe as ignorant those accusing him of demanding 25% from the River's government. Now that's been the size of our package for the week. My name is Favor Aham. Thank you so much for watching.